Hello and welcome to Flights in Alaska. I'm Dave. Today we're in Wasilla in Matanuska, Susitna Borough, pointed kind of westish. Today's plan is we want to fly around the Nancy Lakes area. And I had a special request to do this a while ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago at this point. And I kind of been putting it off because I, I knew there was going to be some research involved. But but let's give you some context here. So let's look down at our GPS. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So here's the Kenai Peninsula. That's where we've been exploring. Here's Anchorage right in here. And then just north, about 35, 40 miles, is the city of Wasilla over here. And we're in the Wasilla Airport. And what we're going to do is we're going to head into the west over to this region, which is the Nancy Lake State Recreation Area. Now, there's a lot to say about it, both from the current context of a state recreation area, but also from the historical context and the Dena Athabascan information. I'm going to use Shem Pete's Alaska by Jim Carrey and Jim Fall extensively as we talk about this area. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get off the ground here, and then we'll start really talking about stuff as we progress. As you might have noticed, I am in a tail drag. I'm in a cub, the... Uh, the cub crafter in the in the flight simulator. Wow, I'm a shitty pilot today. Let me um, let's try this. And the reason I chose this is just because it's a slightly slower aircraft, and so it's going to be easier for us to to sort of stop and talk about the landscape. Uh, and also, it's an overwing, and so we could kind of look to our left and see down. And that sure is pretty, isn't it? That looks that's that's my home right here, guys. This is what I see. This is my house, not my house, my home. Anyway, uh, that's not here nor there. Let's let's kind of tip to our right. I'm gonna follow the Parks Highway, or if you look out on the, the maps, it's the George Parks Highway, but literally nobody calls it that. Um, it's kind of right here below us, and this this is a highway that's a two-lane highway for the most part that runs basically north-south with some east-west components all the way up to Fairbanks. It's about a five-hour drive. Uh, it's the shortest way to Fairbanks from Anchorage is to take this route. I've done it a ton of times. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous drive. Takes friggin' forever, and there's definitely some construction. You go through Denali National Park and all kinds of cool stuff. If you come up here on vacation, highly recommend to take the drive. Um, okay, so the other thing here is Mount Susitna. If you were here with me on the very first video I did, I talked about that very briefly, and I talked about the sort of faux legend we have. Now, I want to think about Shempeats, Alaska a little bit harder and, and use some some resources that are that are dug up from from Shem Pete and his brother Billy Pete by a couple of very talented anthropologists. And uh, the name of this mountain, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it, but it's down there. I just popped it up. And what that means is Little Mountain. And apparently it's it's a pairing to the Great One of Denali or Mount McKinley, as you might know. And that's off in this direction. You can't see it from here. And I am not meaning to do this. I'm not sure what's going on here. And uh, this is a sacred mountain, this 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 uh, Mount Susitna here. Um, it's uh, it's um, according to uh, Shempitz, Alaska, what it says is that Nolchina Sky Clan first landed in Cook Inlet at Mount Susitna when they descended on a frozen cloud. That's a direct quote from. Shem beats Alaska. Um, and that's uh, one of the, the reasons it's sort of uh, sacred. And it, it um, they apparently that you get power from this. These, these people got power from that stuff. Now, then we kind of think back to the Sleeping Lady legend here that uh, was developed. I, you know, I thought it was in the 60s. But as I look at Shem beats Alaska, Alaska, it's a little bit less clear. It seems that um, the legend of Sleeping Lady was published in 1976. And there's a follow-up in 1994 uh, by Ann Dixon. And the story itself appeared to have uh, to come up in the 1930s or, or the 1950s. Um, but according to Billy Pete, um, what he said was that this mountain they call Sleeping Beauty, I don't know for what reason. I read on a piece of paper there was a legend behind that. There was a warrior who went to war, and his woman lay down in the brush and went to sleep. There's no such denina story as Sleeping Beauty. I don't think so. Uh, and that's a direct quote, again, from Shem Pete's Alaska by Jim Carrey and Jim Paul. And uh, anyways, I just wanted to, to point that out. Uh, so as we fly through here, I'm pointing those things out. Uh, and this is the southern Alaska range here. 
I know I kind of mentioned earlier that I was confused about this. This mountain range, because the Alaska range for me is up here, but this is the South Alaska range. Things kind of curve around and come down this way. And again, we're, we're flying over a pretty well roaded part of the state. So you can get to a lot of places in here. We're flying, I believe that's right where we're looking at here off to our left is, is Big Lake, Alaska. And uh, Big Lake is also known as um, Ka'enaka Bena. And, and there's the word for that. I may have kind of missed that, but but the Kanik Arms and Ina lived there. Um, I didn't I didn't actually get a definition for that. Uh, I have, probably have it to my fingertips as I film this. It's sort of tough to to do both things. But one thing that I noticed in Shempeets, Alaska, was a story by Bailey Theodore, who reported that the Aleuts or the Aleutic people once attacked the Denina village there. And, and I don't I don't know much about that except that. Uh, um, it's probably a reasonably uh, authentic story. I don't know when it would have happened. I mean, most of these folks were talking about times that were in the, the early 1900s. I'm way off course here. I'm sorry about that. I'm sort of too busy talking, again, trying to follow the the Parks Highway here. And there's the railroad as well, kind of uh, wandering around along with us. Here we go. Let's try to do this. Maybe we'll trim out a little bit. We don't need to keep climbing at this point. Again, uh, super busy talking, not really busy enough uh, navigating our aircraft. So this area is just super beautiful, very, very flat, but, but not like flat in like Florida flat or Minnesota flat. It's, it's hilly through here, but, but you know, fairly, fairly flat, honestly, for, for Alaska. Well, for this part of Alaska anyways. Again, our Parks Highway here, so we come towards our intersection of the I think they call that the Big Lake Cutoff, where you turn and go out towards Big Lake. Actually, that might be back there, thinking about it. I'm trying to orient myself. Now I'm all confused. I'm turned around. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm way turned around. I'm not anywhere near the Big Lake Cutoff. It's way back there. This here is the Little Susitna River. And the, the Little Susitna River is, uh, let's throw a name up here. It's Sash Tashtashnu. Okay, I, I slaughtered that. You can see the name. And according to Jim Carrey, he's a gifted linguist and, and very talented anthropologist. And Jim Falls spent time with all these folks too. Um, there's no clear etymology possible. They could not figure out what that name means. And there's also in Shempeets, Alaska, an Atna Athabascan name that's really similar um, to that, uh, that local upper inlet um, dialect. Um, but it was an area that was used by the the folks of Red Shirt Lake, they're the, uh, uh, let's see here, Nich, Nich, Ilch, Nich Ilch folks. And um, we'll talk about those guys in a little bit. They're from the Red Shirt Lake area, and that's really interesting. And that's what I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about today as we circle through here. And I do want to point out there is a lot of information through this area. This is what we're looking at here is the Nancy Lake area. I, I am, or the Nancy Lake uh, State Recreation Area, I am not going to cover quarter of what we could talk about, I think. Uh, there's so much stuff we could talk about. Uh, I'm going to try to hit the highlights, try to remember the highlights, um, and do my best. Again, it's a little it's a little tough when you're trying to fly an airplane and then also talk about stuff and, and sort of doing it off the cuff. And we'll actually come back to this area and talk a little bit about some of these, some of these places here. So we're kind of pointed right at Nancy Lake right here. And this is where that Nancy Lake recreation area starts. We all think about it in this area. We tend to think about it in terms of this lake because it, it, the recreation area sort of borders this lake and then opens up further south here. But the highway, that, that is to say the Parks Highway, uh, and you know these highways have name or numbers like most um, state routes in, in the U.S. Uh, Alaskans tend not to use numbers for our highways. We have few enough of them we can give them names. So that's what's going on right here. Um, so if you're looking on a map, you, you might see a number, but I think most of us don't even know what that root number is. I honestly have no idea. Um, so Nancy Lake, I actually struggled a little bit in finding the, the Denina name for this one because it doesn't figure that predominantly, and, and it should. Uh, there was an old village site at the outlet of this lake, um, and it's called Tudli Bena, Old Water Lake. But it, again, it, I had to dig it up. It's not the most important um, lake in the in the area. In fact, we're going to head towards that. That would be Red Shirt Lake for the Denina Athabasca. Now, for for uh, tourism and and just recreation, 
this is super important. And you can see now all these cabins. I don't think there's a lot of year-round residents in this area. Probably more than zero, but but uh, but not not more than hundreds for sure. Uh, all through here, you're definitely going to see float planes and all kinds of stuff like that. Boats, uh, tons of fishing opportunities in here. You can kind of see it from the highway here. The highway is actually fairly above the lake, maybe by even a couple hundred feet. That's my recollection. It's been a long time since I've driven out this way. Um, and again, there's a lot of good recreation areas. What I'm going to try to do is swing down towards uh, the South Raleigh Lakes and then, or South Raleigh Lake, I should say, and then down towards Redshirt from there. And we'll talk about Redshirt Lake. And South Raleigh is a, a cool lake because you can go camping there. It's an easy camping uh, destination to get to. It's very popular. Uh, I think the last time my wife and I went there, it was 4th of July, and that was the very last time we ever went camping because it was such a huge party that we were just unprepared for that uh, it just kind of turned us off to, to camping. And, and not to say that if this is a bad place to go visit by stretch, it's just you kind of got to pay attention. Look at all these little docks and stuff out here. Sort of feel like we're in Minnesota somewhere. All this, all this uh, recreational kind of stuff going on. This looks to me like it might actually be a private strip, a landing strip that is, as opposed to a road. I could be wrong about that, but the, you know this area is so full of landing strips. You never know. You never know. So let's see. I'm looking at the Parks Highway. I'm trying to figure out where this road is. I know, I, you know, I'm just not used to seeing it um, from the air, so I'm trying to figure it out from here. I think it's right here. We're going to turn this way and towards that. South Raleigh Campground. It's actually pretty far in there uh, if you head that way. Uh, and there's all these lakes that look like they're really visible, but but they're generally not. Um, there's so much foliage and stuff. There's there's all these lakes and things in here you just don't, you can't really see. I actually don't know that that's a road. I think that's a power line, honestly. I don't know what the heck is going on with those big trucks. You're not going to see a big box truck right now. Here. That's bull. Look at that. That is nonsense. That is absolutely not whatever. Nonsense. This here is an airstrip, obviously. That might even be on my GPS. Let's see. Uh, no. But that's pretty much an airstrip. So now I'm I'm way off track. I don't know where the hell I'm at. Let's see. Redshirt Lake is out. I think that's where we're headed. Maybe further down even. Oh yeah, it's way further down. Redshirt Lake's way the heck of running out here. I went way further than I was expecting to. Yeah, I'm 90% sure that's a landing strip. But again, they're 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 all out here. And all here is good fishing, good fishing, good stuff to go do and see. All through here is uh, canoe and hiking trails and all kinds of stuff. That is 100% private strip. I should have landed there. That'd have been fun. Maybe one of these days. Not right now. Right now. Right now, I got to stay focused. I got to do the the tour. That's what we're doing. So here we're headed towards. I think the Raleigh Lakes. There's North Raleigh, I think here, South Raleigh. This looks right to me. We're gonna go right towards that. Now, South Raleigh Lake is a popular camping area. It's a big campground out there, uh, very popular. You can rent canoes and stuff, um, go fishing, whatever. In here, the fish is mostly these days pike. That's what you're gonna get. You can uh, come out here in the winter time. Uh, if you come out off this ridge in the summertime, there's a hiking trail from like this point right here on South Raleigh. And it kind of follows this ridge and drops down, I think right in there. Um, and it's about two and a half miles. It's a pretty hike. It's, you know, not super intense. Um, I haven't done it since I was in high school, but it's cool. I highly recommend taking a kuna out here is always fun. Again, it's pretty much just pike fishing out here, but, but it's pretty to, to paddle around. You can kind of come through this way. There is a canoe trail. You can kind of take a canoe through here and then make your way out, I don't know, to the rest of the lake system. I've never done that, um, but but you could do that. Now off here, you can kind of see it as the, the Big Sioux or the, the, the Sioux Sitna River. We call it the Big Sioux. Um, I'm going to talk about that more later. Somewhere off in this direction, and I don't really know exactly where, there's a place called Sioux Sitna Station. It's like 12 or so miles from this red shirt lake. And, Redshirt Lake is, a, is an important recreation destination these days. You can't really get there by road. You've got to hike in or take a plane or a canoe or a boat or something. Um, but you're not, you're not going to drive in there for sure. Um, but in looking at uh, Shempeats, Alaska, this place comes up over and over and over again. And what 
um, Red Shirt Lake is called in the the Tanani Athabasca areas Tanshtun Bena, Tanshtun Bena, which is enclosed object or bag is said in water. I, I couldn't find better context for that. Shempeet's Alaska is a fairly long book. I'd probably have to read it more extensively to understand what that meant. But what's really important is the people who lived here on this western side somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where the settlement was, but it's somewhere over here. Not western side, eastern side. I'm upside down. Eastern side, I'm sorry. Um, and these are the Nechish people. And they're, Shem Pete and Billy Pete mention them extensively throughout Shem Pete's Alaska. And these folks are active throughout the area. And what Shem Pete said um, in Shem Pete's Alaska is that this is the best lake in Alaska, as he said. It's got the biggest fish. The fish are running when the snow falls. And uh, what he basically said was that people around here are just not going to go hungry because there's always something to eat. So you've got silver salmon coming in here, red salmon coming in here, steelhead coming in here, rainbow trout coming in here. These days, I don't know that any of those things are really super abundant in this lake. Certainly, once you get into the lakes, you're not harvesting salmon. That's just how it is with state laws and, and, and salmon fishing regulations. But with like um, rainbow trout, that's a different story. And, and I'm pretty sure this lake is just mostly... Um, mostly northern pike and northern pike are not native to this area they were introduced somehow and there's some disagreement about how that happened a lot of people say that it was introduced by people wanting to to fish for northern pike and northern pike are are indigenous to to north of the alaska range and there's also some speculation that these northern pike were actually introduced on float plains somehow the eggs got carried i i don't really know um, the bottom line is that it's the northern pike in this area have been big problems for the local rainbow trout populations, which are, you know, if you find a lake that doesn't have um, a northern pike infestation, the rainbow trout are numerous and large. And there's a few lakes I've gotten to that do not have, do not have any kind of northern pike problem. And uh, that is exactly what you see is this just tons and tons of rainbow trout are there. And that's even lakes that are not stocked. But you kind of have to get off the road system for that to be a thing. So again, that's Red Shirt Lake. Uh, this is in, an important, important place or was for the Denina people of the area. Um, Shempeets, Alaska, again, just kind of goes on. This this lake is repeated over and over again. And the, the people on this eastern shore, um, again, mentioned repeatedly throughout um, so, you know, I think we all think about it as an important recreational area in the sense that it's, um, it's, it's important. It's, it's, you know, it's fun. It's, it's a good place to go see. But I think that most of us don't understand that there was this really important Alaska Native settlement in the early 1900s. And, and that pretty much went away, uh, you know, after the 1918 flu. That's kind of when things really changed in this area. And it has a lot to do with just everybody dying off. And, and that's the sad story in this area is the 1918 flu kind of wiped out the Tanina population in this area. I think the, the Yentna people, um, not that way, they lived up here. Um, I, I don't know that any of them really made it through that pandemic. And so when we think about pandemic right now, maybe want to poo-poo what we're doing, you know, I think about these people and how they fared in the last pandemic. And this is this is what I think about. They're not here anymore, man. They're gone, and that's sad. And it's really hard. But um, yeah, so I guess if you're thinking about the pandemic, this is what I think about: is these settlements that are no longer there because of, because of those kinds of things. And of course, white settlement didn't help either. There's other there's other issues about that. Um, so we're now passing over uh, Lynx Lake, I think, right over here off my nose. Kind of can't really see it. I'm gonna try and turn so we can see it before we head back south again. It's another one that appears more than once in Shempeets, Alaska. Uh, and Lynx Lake is, uh, I'm not going to pronounce that name, but uh, we'll, we'll pop the name up there for you. And what that means is Lake of Creek that flows swiftly. And this one also appears in respect to those uh, Nechish people um, that lived off of Red Shirt Lake there. Um, again, this is all connected to canoeing trails and things like this. You can come out here and and just kind of spend days on canoes and hiking and camping and just enjoying the, the wilderness. And it's, you know, it's close enough to the road you can get to it, but far enough away that you feel like you're out out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's it's really remarkable. And of course, most of these lakes are, are large enough. You can land an aircraft if you've got a float plane and come out here and 
and do that as well. Do some fish and camp and whatnot. I'm gonna try and head back south. We're gonna aim back towards towards Wasilla here. Now, um, we're looking at the Talkeetna Mountains. We're looking at the sort of the north side. The south side's over here. Uh, that's where we were before. Uh, that's what I normally see is that, that south side of those Talkeetna Mountains. And the Hatcher's Pass, if you saw that video, it kind of flew up in there and saw Independence Gold Mine. That actually comes out over here. I actually think it might be, I don't know if it's this one or this one. Honestly, I don't remember. But there's that road comes out and it uh, it rejoins the Parks Highway in Willow, which is which is just a bit north of us here. So it kind of comes across. A lot of mining up in there still going on. Tremendous amount of recreation. Recreational cabins, hunting, all kinds of stuff you can you can go and do out there. That's not really a super great location for folks who are not from here. Uh, it's more of a place that locals tend to, to do a little bit better with. Because uh, it's just not a lot of public public use areas there. So here we are, we're headed back towards Scylla here. Again, a ton of lakes in this area. This this area was, um, I think, dominated by glaciers at one point in time, ages and ages ago. And you can really see the features. This, this sim actually doesn't do the geography particularly well uh, in the sense that, you know, how the things, uh, the, how the uh, landscape rolls, I guess, and, and the way it, it sits. You can kind of imagine maybe at some point in the distant past, there's a massive, massive glacial dam up here that broke and just washed over and, you know, made these big ripples in the in the land and sort of filled in or made these sort of lakes. Maybe that's not really what happened, but that's what it looks like from, from pretty high up is sort of glacial situation here. So, yeah, this is... Little Sioux Sitna River here, the Little Sioux as we call it. It's a fishing thing I mentioned before. You get uh, Chinook salmon or King salmon, a few of those up in here. Not not enough you can fish for them anymore, really. And silver salmon or coho salmon, and then sockeye or, or red salmon. And uh, I don't know if you get trout and that kind of stuff in there. I've, I've never, I don't know that I've really fished in here. It's it's pretty placid through here. It's fairly calm whitish kind of river for what it is. And then as you get up towards Hatcher's Pass, which we did uh, a couple of videos ago, it's sort of this rushing mountain stream. It's um, all these river rocks and, and so on. It's very, very pretty. Uh, and all of these valleys here, we're going to explore a lot of this because I know it reasonably well. I know it well enough to do some research and, and allow us to get in there. So this is Kanek and there's Kanek Glacier up there. We're going to do that. That's a short flight up where you can't see right now. That's that's the Matanuska River Valley and Matanuska Glaciers up there. We're going to go up that direction, land at Sheep Mountain, which I've done once and totally it was a spectacular fail. Um, Eagle River over here. I want to do that uh, too. I've been up in there in person. I want to see what it looks like in the sim. And then there's also the Eklutna uh, River um, and then the Eklutna Lake up in there. And Eklutna Lake is the, the water source for Anchorage. And Anchorage is just over here. It's Point McKenzie is what that's called in this in this area and there's farming and stuff out there we might fly over that at some point too it's kind of interesting i'm gonna sort of look to the left here i think this is yeah you can kind of see all through here is uh trails and then these trails are like the four wheelers and jeeps and this kind of stuff no real roads in a lot of these places but you get plenty of you get plenty of uh trails and stuff you can come out and um i've i've i don't know that i've ever done it myself come out here and, and done in these any of these trails and four wheelers or in the winter time, you, you take some old snowmobiles, or, or we call them snow machines in this area. We don't call them snowmobiles. Um, well, we're headed right for Big Lake. Kind of want to head back towards. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe let's do that. Maybe let's just land at Big Lake. I wonder if I can do that. Let's let's see if I can line up. Where are we at? Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a stretch. Let's do it anyways. Let's make that happen. So let's go over Big Lake instead of heading all the way back to Wasilla. That's pretty far. So we're looking at Big Lake again. Um, that's uh, Ka'anaka Bena. Hopefully I got that kind of right. Um, again, I didn't get a definition. I apologize. Uh, I have to dig it up again to find that. But, um, but uh, yeah. 
this is a major recreation area here. And a lot more people live in here these days year round than, than used to. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember sitting out here and um, some family friends had a, had a cabin or something. I can remember sitting at the end of the dock, looking down in some super duper clear water. Um, and that was, I don't know, it's just memorable. I don't know why I still remember. I couldn't have been watching it, obviously. Uh, and then, um, and then the other thing I remember is driving across this lake on the ice in the wintertime. And that's a totally legal and normal thing for people to do in this area is that the lakes sort of become a, uh, they become part of the road system. Pardon me while I try to remember where the hell the runway is. I, I just saw it and I'm like, I'm going to land here. Now I do not know where it's at. No idea. At oh, there it is. I think. Oh, I got, I got a light. We're going to make that happen. We're going to try to make that happen without crashing. So again, we're looking at the Chugach Mountains across the Cook Inlet there, or the Kinnick Arm. We're going to fly over that quite a bit. I think in the future, this is again my home area, and so I'm most comfortable with this area, talking about it and finding stuff to share with you. And actually, I'm I'm learning a lot. I had no idea before I started this video about Redshirt Lake and how how important it was to the the local uh, Denina folks who um, who lived here. Uh, and again, you know, Shem Pete and Billy Pete. Um, you know, some, some very old gentlemen when they were interviewed in, in actually the early 80s, I think, is when they were interviewed. And what was cool about that is, is I, I do personally know Jim Fall, who did a lot of these interviews, and he's given me some some sort of tidbits that I, I'm not 100% sure even in the book. Uh, and, and I don't know that I can necessarily relate them because I thought they were interesting and fun, but I can't I can't recall them with enough clarity to, to go ahead and, and relay them to, to you today. But but it's, it's really um, a good... Uh, a cool thing for me to be able to to get to talk to folks that, that that did that research and are willing to talk about what they learned and what they know um, from from some of these folks that were here in the early 1900s even. So yeah, we're coming into this Big Lake Airport. I think that's where we're at. Kind of doesn't really matter that much, but we're in the Matanuskusu Sitna Valley. We'll try to keep this from going too too sideways on us here. Actually, this is looking like it's going to be a pretty okay. Run. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I spoke too soon. Oh, oh, I think we got it. I think we got it. Wow, that was a good landing, actually. Um, cool. I'm glad we did that. Well, anyways, uh, at this point, I don't really have anything else I wanted to, to share with you today, but thank you so much for hanging out with me in my home territory talking about the, the local folks and some of the local cool stuff you can go do. If you enjoy the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. And if you want to know when it's coming out, make sure the bell on just to the right of that subscribe button is lit up. Um, otherwise, again, thank you so much. I'm having a great time. I will see you in, in the next video. Hi guys, Dave here. I just wanted to stop at the end of this video to say hello and give you a heads up as to some things going on with the channel over the coming weeks and months. To start, I had a technology malfunction this week and I lost a couple weeks worth of work. Some of the videos that I'd recorded and was researching and getting ready to, to get into the editing queue. So I've got to re-record all those and, and get them ready again to, to put out there. So it's going to be a couple, well, maybe not a couple weeks, but it's going to be a little while before I get more content out the other thing is I do in fact want to start slowing down how often I release to maybe once a week to every other week, which is fairly spread out, but these videos can take a long time to record. I frequently have to re-record them because I forget something, I mispronounce a name so badly I can't re-record over it and fix it, um, sound issues, just the usual kinds of things that happen. Um, and I do want this to be a good, informative experience. The whole point of this this channel is to talk about Alaska and local demographics, local geography, local everything, and things that, that you wouldn't normally uh, get to hear about Alaska. So the other part of that is that these videos are going to start getting longer. Right now, I've been sticking to South Central Alaska, which is where I'm, I'm at right now. Let's see behind me there, nice September fall weather. And um, I'm going to continue to do some of those videos, but I'm not going to stick here. I need to start moving out to other parts of the state that are also really interesting. Um, 
But again, those take longer to record, they take longer to edit, they take longer to research. So I just wouldn't be able to get that content out quite as quickly. Now with that, these videos uh, are getting longer, uh, as I said, and I'm trying to gonna try to keep these under about 45 minutes and then more in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 minutes as much as possible. However, some of that is gonna cut off some content that, that I really kinda wanna show off or it's, it's gonna make it fairly choppy. So let me know what you think about that. Do you wanna see content that's been uh, su sliced so we kinda jump from place to place or more montage kinda things? I can speed things up, I've looked at that. I don't know that that's gonna look super great, but it, it would keep that geography in there. So these are all things I'm going to be looking at to try to make these videos a little bit shorter without eliminating the content or reducing the content. So that's where we're at. Again, I'm going to keep making these videos. Um, I'm having a good time. I hope you're enjoying them. Um, if you want to see more content and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Make sure the notification bell is lit up. And of course, as always, uh, leave a comment, leave a like. If you have somewhere you'd like to see in Alaska, someplace maybe you've only ever heard of, let me know. I'll get it. I'll get it into the mix here. And uh, this video that we just did was actually a request from a comment in a previous video. It took me a little while to get to it, but I'll get to it. Uh, again, I have to do some research and make sure I'm getting you the most interesting facts. I could talk all day long about different places that we visit and kind of have to cherry pick what's what seems interesting. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.